After having the last two days off, the Hurricanes fly to St. Louis to take on the Blues to start the final road trip of the regular season. What can we possibly expect in that game, which has so much implications, not for just the Hurricanes, but also the Blues? That and much more on a Friday edition of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked On Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to a Friday edition of Locked On Hurricanes, your team every day. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you, the every day, for making this your first listen of the day. Super excited to bring another great addition to what is this Locked On Hurricanes podcast before we jump into everything today's episode is brought to you by indeed indeed knows when you're growing your own business you have to make every dollar count that's why with indeed you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements visit indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now terms and conditions apply so for today's edition of the show we are going to preview the hurricanes in blues matchup on friday night which is going to be an eight o'clock start also going to talk about potential playoff matchups as the metro third spot in the wild card two positions haven't really been decided yet so there's about four teams the hurricanes could play in terms of if they go in the division and get the one seed or the two seed in the east or stick in that second metro spot to, to potentially face whoever gets that third spot in the the Metro, and we're also going to finish up the show with a little survey results from the National Hockey League Players mm-hmm. Association on a couple very interesting categories that we find some Carolina Hurricanes in, in those areas and all that good stuff. Uh, so with the Hurricanes playing the Blues, it is the final matchup of the season as the Hurricanes play the Blues back in Raleigh on January 7th. So this is probably the first time in since January that the Hurricanes have played the Blues. And the last time the two teams matched up, the Blues did win in a shootout 2-1 to uh, after Jordan Benson made 29 saves. And this is the same game where Antti Ranta also made 21 saves in his uh, when he was in net. And this was in the middle of the Hurricanes' uh, big point streak where they had six at the time going 5-0-1. To start January, unfortunately, it was uh, Nathan Walker that won that game, or he got the first goal for the Blues, and then it was Jake Neighbors and Braden Shen who won the game in a shootout, um, which unfortunately wasn't ideal for the Hurricanes, but that's the only time they've played them um, this season, and it's going to be very interesting to see how the two teams stack up because you really look at it on the side of just the Blues, you're looking at a team who, going into the game, have a 0.3% chance of making the playoffs. They basically have to win out and have to hope that other teams like Vegas and then, you know, and everyone else, basically who in the wild card two spot needs to kind of lose a lot of ground and the Blues need to get a lot of help just from other teams beating them and then the Blues go in games themselves. So it's going to... There's a lot of storylines going into this one for the most part. Like I said, the Hurricanes, they're just going for a seeding at this point. Are they going to catch the you know New York Rangers and go in the Metro, or is it just going to be they're just going to fight for a sec? You know, the second spot's already locked up for them. Now it all comes down to go in a division. And do you possibly go for, I don't even say the president's trip, but just kind of playing for the one seed in the East, and hopefully you get that wild card two team or – do you go and win the president's trophy? So it's a lot on the line for the Hurricanes, too, just of, like I said, do you go for division? Do you go for president's trophy? Or do you just go for the seed and hopefully you get that one seed in the East or you stick with this, you know, number two seed? But it's like it's going to be a game where it's two teams that are fighting for different stories, different aspirations and stuff like that. Hurricanes are in the playoff spot. It's guaranteed. Blues are fighting for a playoff spot at this point, and it's coming down to the last three games of the season for them to do it. And the fact that it's in St. Louis, it's going to be 
it's going to be a matchup where you're going to probably see Jordan Bennington in net. You know, hopefully, you know, for him, he's hoping to try to shut the door once again and get his team to win. And hopefully for the Hurricanes that uh, if you are shelling Jordan Bennington, that you don't get Jordan Bennington shenanigans. And who knows? It's just how Jordan Bennington is. But also when it comes to the Hurricanes, you know, with how the team's been rotating their goalies since Frederick Anderson has been back since March 7th, all signs probably indicate that it's going to be Frederick Anderson and that because Pierre Kachekov played the other night against the Boston Bruins on Tuesday. So most likely in terms of just how rotations have been, you're going to see the great Dana net against Jordan Bennington. And then after that, who knows what Chicago and Columbus is because the fact that you start, you know, rising players and all that good stuff, but that's, you know, <laughs> a little bit later on down the road, um, you know, with that, all those games on Sunday and Tuesday, but Kings blues, like I said, it's going to be an interesting matchup with just how the goalies are going to be. Do you, what Bennington is the Blues going to get? You know, we all know what what Freddie's been like for the Hurricanes. You know, eight zero and one. You know, a sub one point two goals against a save percentage of the nine fifties. Like, there's not really much more you can think out of that. Now, in terms of the lines for the Hurricanes, with how they've been, there hasn't really been a lot of changes since pretty much everyone is healthy. So I'm not really sure what you're going with in terms of, you know, do you see just Barry Cook and Yemi getting himself back in the lineup? Or is this where you see Ryde Brennamore running with the same group again? You know, Jake Gensel, Sebastian Ajo, Seth Jarvis on the top line. You know, are you looking at Martinuk, Kuznetsov, Nietzsche on the second line? Then possibly, you know, do you get Tara Vinen, Jordan Stahl, Andrei Svechnikov, or do you move Tara Vinen up to the second and move Jordan Martinuk back to the third? And then a fourth line of Steph Nason, Jack Jury, Jesper Faust. That's probably what it's going to look like, depending on how, you know, Rod wants to run with either Tara Vinen on the second line or Jordan Martinuk on the second line. Of course, you know, they leave Andrei Svechnikov on the third that they have been doing. It's a possibility as well, and that's how they've been doing it for the last few games is where unless Jesper Foss is sick or someone else is out ill, Cockney M is the odd man out right now in the forward core, and you know it's it stinks to see for a guy like that where he's still trying to prove that you know he's worth that $4.8 million contract that he has. It's only the second year of it too, so to him being an healthy scratch right now is probably not ideal for him. And it makes it hard for him just the fact of how he played a lot of the season this year, played 76 games, and now it's kind of like you're kind of stuck as the odd man out. And that's really saying something, too, because you also got Brendan Lemieux, who's, you know, played 30-odd games this year, and he's coming when they really needed him and stuff like that. But right now it could be KK's back on the outside looking in again, even even if it's just not even for the fact that the Hurricanes already got their playoff spot locked up. It's just, all right, they're going for points. They're going – for divisions they're going for a seeding that could get them home ice advantage through the playoffs of course you know home ice advantage doesn't really mean anything anymore in the, in the league because almost every seems like every game there's a comeback there's teams who are winning on the road in the playoffs like yes there are buildings that are tough to win in but it's not how it was when you think of you know joe lewis when the red wings were in their heyday of like okay this is going to be you're already down one nothing because you know it's it's Joe Lewis or, you know, you go into old Nassau when the Islanders were good, then they lock it down there. It's just, it's, it's a, it's a thing where home ice doesn't matter, but you still want to have it because you want the extra change. You know, you want that second change when it comes to, you know, if you're at home and stuff like that. So while the hurricanes could rest guys, they also know, hey, we want to go win a division. We want to go win that first. We want to go win that number one seed. We want to have the most home ice advantage they can have possible, and that's what's kind of on the line for the Hurricanes right now. Defensive core, you know it's going to be the same. You know it's going to be Slavin and Burns on that top pair, along with you know Shea and Pesci, Chatfield and Orlov, and then it's just going to be Tony D'Angelo as the, as the healthy extra defenseman per usual. In terms of the prospects, you know, with Scott Morrow, you know, Bradley Nadeau and Jake's, uh, Jackson Blake expecting to be in the press box too. I doubt they're going to get, they're going to see time against the Blues. 
you might see one of those guys in against the Blackhawks or the Blue Jackets, maybe all three, maybe just a combination of the two, or maybe none of them see ice time in the regular season. But just being able to be in the room, like I said on yesterday's show for Thursday, that it's just you want them in the room, being around the guys and stuff like that. So it's going to be probably the same lineup unless maybe a couple of guys flip-flop two different lines, but I don't see any – healthy scratches coming in. I don't see KK drawing in or Brendan Lemieux unless, you know, Rod Brendamore and his group think, you know, maybe it's going to be a little bit more physical. Let's throw Brendan Lemieux in just in case, or, you know, maybe some guy needs a break, even though they had two days off, maybe throw Cockney back in. I don't know. It's going to be interesting, but I think it's going to be a good matchup overall. You know, it's it's always a, a tight game between the Hurricanes and the Blues, uh, especially since you got, you know, former Hurricane Justin Falk. You know, he hasn't been there in quite some time, but, you know, it's always it's always a good indicator of how the team plays against a former Hurricane, and especially one like Justin Falk. So I would expect Anderson in that, you know, probably going against Bennington, Ford Corp, not a lot of changes, probably a couple flip-flops on what line they're on. Defensive core is going to be about the same. So that's pretty much it on that. So before we get into segment two, we're going to talk about possible playoff updates, uh, which we'll get to here in a second on a Friday edition of Locked on Hurricanes. Life insurance is very important, and it's a good safety net for your family, but trying to find the right policy on your own can be time-consuming and overwhelming. Polygenius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with the financial safety net starting today. With Polygenius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. And for me, when it comes to just life insurance, for me personally, it's good to have just in case anything happens, you're covered, you don't have to worry about other expenses where it gets more expensive out of pocket. It's always good just to have life insurance no matter what it is. It's always something that it gives you that sense of ease and doesn't make you worried about if something happens, okay, am I going to be covered? With life insurance, it's a good thing to have. And with Polygenius, it helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you talk you through it. Talk to a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step, and it's easily it's easily to compare quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Your work-life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, which is then even worse. It may not come with you if you leave your job. So it's always good to be covered. And with Polygenius gives you unbiased advice from licensed expert supporting team, thousands of five-star reviews on Google, and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Polygenius. Head to polygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's polygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Welcome back to segment two of Locked On and Hurricanes, your team every day. So it's very, we got a really like chaotic end to the Eastern Conference in terms of playoffs because right now, most the, the top three spots in the Atlantic are locked up, the top two spots in the Metro are locked up, but it's in the wild card one spot's pretty much locked up too. The only spots that are available right now is the Metro Division third spot and the wild card two spot. And it seems like no one wants to keep those. No one wants those spots right now because it seems like every day there's always a new team jumping in the Metro three spot or a new team dropping or jumping into the Metro, you know, or in the wild card two spot. And then they're out of it the next day and another team jumps in. And it's just, it's absolute chaos right now. Absolute chaos for the fact that it's the New York Rangers, or sorry, the New York Islanders, the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Washington Capitals, and the Philadelphia Flyers are the four teams in the Metro right now who are fighting for the Wild Card 2 spot with the Detroit Red Wings in the middle of all this, and also the Metro 3 spot. And even then, you look at where the Metro 3 spot is compared to the rest of the division. Rangers and Hurricanes are over 100 points. Metro three is still in the eighties. Like they're 20 points behind. This is like, if you're looking in terms of just points it is going to be such a lopsided affair, looking at how the seasons were for the top two teams in the Metro and then third place and below 
<laughs> and I'm not saying it's going to be a gimme because it's the NHL. Anyone can be the anyone. I mean, we obviously seen that in recent, you know, in the recent few seasons where Columbus Blue Jackets sweep the Tampa Bay Lightning. You know, the Florida Panthers be the juggernaut that is the Boston Bruins last year after they set you know a record for most wins and most points in a regular season. So it's the playoffs too. Like we've seen eight seeds go make the Stanley Cup final: L.A. Kings, Nashville Predators. And stuff like that, and the, and the Edmonton Oilers when they go when they go play the Hurricanes in 2006. So it's the playoffs, man. Anyone can beat anyone. Like I said, it's not going to be a giving for the Hurricanes in the first round because you got you got to go play the games. You got to go beat everyone. Doesn't matter how your path is. And right now, it's you know who would have thought you see the Washington Capitals up there with a minus 30 goal differential, or you go see the Pittsburgh Penguins who not even a week ago people thought they were out. They thought they were done. And now they're in a spot where it's they could leapfrog and go to the wild card two spot, or they could leapfrog and go to the Metro three because they're they're not that far behind the Islanders. I think last time I checked, they were like one point behind. And I know all three teams played on Thursday. You know, all four of those teams played on Thursday night, so it could be we're looking at a whole different scenario coming into Friday and you know on today, and it's just the fact that. You have four potential teams for the Hurricanes to face. And that's if the Hurricanes go win the Metro and then possibly get the number one, you know, spot in the East. If they get number two, it's going to be Tampa regardless. It's going to be Tampa in the, in the wild card one spot. So if the Hurricanes get the number two seed in the East, if they don't beat out one of the Atlantic teams, then you're getting Tampa. Straight up, that's all it is. Now, that we're basing this whole scenario on if they go get the number one the number one seed in the East, they get home ice for the entire playoffs as the number one seed, and or the possibility of they go and stay in Metro two and they face whoever gets that Metro three spot since everyone wants to play hot potato with it and not really want to give it up at this point. So. As we're looking at it right now, one of the teams is the New York Islanders, who the Hurricanes faced last season in the first round of the playoffs, where they did knock them out in six games. It was a really tough battle, and unfortunately, Tampa Terravine got hurt at one point, and it was just an absolute dogfight in the first round. That's not even before that. The Hurricanes had to go play the Devils, and then the Panthers in the second round, and then the Eastern Conference Final. So for the season, if you're looking at the head-to-head matchup, the, the Hurricanes are 2-1-0-1 oh, against the Islanders in the four games that they played uh, against each other this year. 16 goals, four for the Hurricanes, and then they gave up 14 goals in those four games to the Islanders with the goal differential of being the Hurricanes had four goals per game, and then the Islanders had 3.50. And with me covering, you know, being the hockey writer's beat, uh, beat writer, I was actually at the game uh, where the Hurricanes lost in overtime to the Islanders. where And that was the same game when Sebastian Ajo scored a goal with like less than two seconds left, which was like just the pop in that building was absolutely insane of how loud that, you know, what that goal was. And that was a really tough fight for both sides. But you kind of know what you're facing with the Islanders. And it's, you know, we're going to try to keep every show. We're going to try to update until those we see more of those X's in the playoff spots. But, with the Islanders, you know what you're going to get. You faced this team last year, and they might have a couple different additions and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's the same team. You kind of know what you're going to be fighting with. And would it be another good matchup? Sure. You you had the you had the tough battle last year. You get them back to back first rounds, possibly. So the, it's a good potential where if the Hurricanes stay two and the Islanders, who are currently third in the Metro, keep it. Then they they do not, there's a rematch of last year's first round once again. Another one is the Pittsburgh Penguins, and I I would actually be really interested in seeing seeing Penguins Hurricanes round one. It wouldn't be a bad matchup. Uh, the Hurricanes, just like against the Islanders, they are two one zero and one against the Penguins. Uh, in this instance, though, they have nine goals for and allowing ten goals to the Penguins. And in terms of goals for and against, they are two point two five goals per game for the Hurricanes, and they have given up two point five to the Pittsburgh Penguins and. I know last game they lost 4-1 to the Penguins, but in reality it was 2-1. It was two empty netters. Alex Adelkovich played a great game. There's nothing you can do about that when he's always somehow showing up to play against the Hurricanes. But 
I, I mean, it would be nice to have a different team that you don't really get to face very much. And again, the Penguins, I think it'd be a fun series. Yes, I know you got, like I said, you got Alex Adelkovich, you got former Hurricanes in Jesse Pogliarvi. You also got Michael Bunting. So, you know, those guys are going to be coming up big for those games. Because I know Pogliarvi scored it, they scored the first goal of the game for the Penguins against the Hurricanes the last time they faced each other. And, of course, Adelkovich played a really, really great game. But, like I said, you, j- you get that story line of, okay, can Jake Gensel come out and do the same thing to the Penguins that he's done for them? Now does he come into the playoffs and knock them out? I think there'll be a fun match to see, okay, Jake Gensel and his former team in the playoffs round one. You know the storylines are going to talk about it and everyone's going to talk about, it. oh, it's Jake for Sid. Can Jake, you know, can Jake Gensel go do it without Sidney Crosby? And so far he's done it pretty well with the Hurricanes, you know, getting over 20 points in 14 games he's been with the team. So <laughs> I think that'd be a great match. And of course, yeah, and of course, you can never overlook, you know, Crystal Tang, you know, Evgeny Malkin, Sidney Crosby. And Sidney Crosby is just Sidney Crosby. So, I mean, that guy is an absolute machine. Like, he's like the thousand points in his career. It's just, it's just, it's crazy how good Sidney Crosby is and on and I know that I know that just the fact that just in terms of just the goals for and against it's it's tight it's a tight one and yeah you don't want to get Sidney Crosby you don't want to, you know stuff like that but Penguins Hurricanes just for the storylines alone of Jay Gensel versus his former team after getting traded by the at the trade deadline first round playoff matchup you know back in Pittsburgh when they go up there I think if you're at, if you're talking if you're asking me what series I would be rooting for, it, uh, while it might be tough because uh, just how the season record was and just the stats of like goals for and goals against and stuff like that, I would still take the Penguins. The Penguins would be a really fun matchup if you ask me. Um, another one is against the Washington Capitals, where the Hurricanes are two o o and two, so never lost in regulation to the Caps. Did have two games where they went to the shootout, unfortunately lost both of them. Um, but in terms of goals for the Hurricanes have scored 17 goals to the Caps 13. And then in terms of goals for per game, it's 4.25 for the Hurricanes, 3.25 for the Capitals. And I, the, the last time they <laughs> – just the absolute insanity of was the fact that 6-5 game was absolutely bonkers. The two goals got taken away. Hurricanes score late to four. So every time they go to a shootout, it is what it is, but luckily the Hurricanes won their last game against them. You know, you get another matchup, you know, 2019 playoffs. Hurricanes, you know, come in as the underdogs, you know, win game seven and double overtime in Washington to go to win your first playoff series since 2009. So you got another good matchup possibly. You know, you got, you know, a, a, an instant rival. I mean, a rivalry all, every single time these two teams play each other. I would not be surprised if that was the case. If it was these two teams, even though the Capitals, for whatever reason, people thought they weren't going to make it. Somehow, with a really bad goal differential, they're still finding a way to make their you know presence felt, especially since uh, we're trying to go for the wild card two spot. And then the other one is the Philadelphia Flyers, where the Hurricanes are 3-1-0-0, scoring 11 goals and only giving up eight. And in terms of goals four per game, it's 2.75 for the Hurricanes. Two uh, games against for the Flyers. If you asked me two weeks ago, I've been okay with playing the Flyers. I mean, it would have been a fun matchup. In fact, you got Rod against Torts. Unfortunately, it's just this massive skid that the Flyers have been on, just the way they've played over the last you know few weeks. Oh, that... I, if they make the playoffs, it's going to be a miracle, and it's going to be a wild card two spot. It's just I don't really see the Flyers going for the Metro three right now. The fact of how far behind they are because they got to go past the Penguins, Detroit, Washington, and the Islanders, even to you know just trying to get through those teams to get a wild card two spot, and then you know all those Metro teams to even get the Metro three spot. So I really doubt that's going to happen for the Flyers. Most likely, I can see either Isles, Pens, or Caps taking the Metro three spot, or the Hurricanes do something and get that you know number one seed in the East, not the Presidents, but at least the number one seed in the East, and go and get you know one of the wild whoever plays in the wild card two spot. But if you ask me, I would love to see Canes Pens just in terms of storylines of Jake versus Sid, you know. Obviously, Michael Bunting and Pauli and Dalkovich against the Kings. I think that'd be a really, really fun one. So 
we are going to – so before we get to segment three, uh, when we're talking about the NHLPA survey results, which is going to be very interesting to see what Hurricanes-esque players or facilities or whatever made it onto this list that was voted by the players, of course, because it's the Player Association, right here on Locked on Hurricanes. When drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Hate waiting. Indeed's U.S. data shows over 8% of Indeed employers find quality candidates with whose resumes on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Something I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy because with Indeed, matching as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Boom! It's hiring at warp speed. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash LockedOn to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash LockedOn, Indeed.com slash LockedOn. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fill up for your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factors Ready to Eat Meals so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. Looking for gourmet meals? Try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. No fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the good stuff. Tailor to your schedule. Customize your weekly meals with flexibility to get as much or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. Factor is your solution for fast, premium meals without the need for cooking. We're celebrating Earth Day all month long. Look out for the Earth Month Eats badge on the menu for our lowest carbon front print meals. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on AHL50 and use code locked on AHL50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on NHL50 at factormeals.com slash locked on AHL50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Welcome back to segment three of Locked on Hurricanes, your team every day. So for this quick and fun third segment, uh, the NHLPA recently put out their survey results uh, that was voted on by the players of certain, you know, what facilities or players and just overall different things. And I thought this was very interesting for the fact that when it comes to which player is the most difficult to face in their own end, Jacob Slavin of the Carolina Hurricanes actually got 7.90% of the vote with Victor Hemming 20.32 and Connor McDavid getting 9.48, which is kind of interesting because the fact you think of Jacob Slavin, all he's known for is his great defensive style, his lack of, of giving up penalties, and just the way his stick, like the way he handles his stick, the way he plays defense. It's just you kind of think you get more votes than just seven point nine percent, but you know what? He got third place votes. You you love to see it for a guy you know that is Jacob Slavin. Because you know the second C stands for clutch. In terms of how he's been this year, uh, he's got five goals and thirty five points. And the funny thing is, with his five goals, he's got two shorthanded goals, 
which is absolutely, you know, you don't really think of Jacob Slavin as a scorer for the fact that he's got two shorthanded goals. And it was like really early on in the season. It's just really great to see. And it's just, it's fun to see how he's been playing this year. And, of course, you know, as the former 2020, 2021 20, Lady Bing winner, should have won 21 22, but that's a different story. But the fact that he did it while only giving up two penalty minutes all season, it's it's crazy to think. Two penalty minutes all season. He's got one penalty, and it was a defense, it was a delay of game puck over the glass penalty. So, in, in reality, <laughs> he gave up no penalties, no regular penalties, just a random puck over the glass. But I guess you can't be perfect. So it is what it is. Uh, but other great stats for just how good Jacob Slavin is. He's got 70 takeaways this year, and he's only given up 32 pucks. So for the fact that he's got 70 takeaways to his 32 give-ups, <laughs> what more can you ask out of this guy other than just being able to put the best players in the league in his back pocket, like you know, Connor McDavid, Nathan McKinnon, Austin Matthews. It's just the fact of how good of a shutdown defenseman Jacob Slavin is. Trust me, he should have got he should have at least some Norris trophies by this point, but <laughs> I digress. That's a whole di- that's a whole different podcast to talk about just how like, weird the, the Norris trophy is now and how the, all that voting is. But Jacob Slavin at this point should already have a couple, but and like I said, should have one more lady being. <laughs> but I digress. But it's good to see the Jacob Slavin bot getting voted on by his peers to be really, really difficult on his own end with a 7.9%, which was third among that whole group and the last thing too that we have to talk about in terms of this was which arena is the toughest to play in as the visiting team and first place which i'm kind of surprised is the t-mobile arena at 31.36 percent i guess it would be tough because the the place is loud you got the pre-game stuff and they call it the fortress so i can kind of get why it's hard to play in vegas just because of how loud it is how raucous the fans are and stuff like that so i, I kind of get it i kind of get it but PNC Arena, 16.31%, which was you know second place, obviously, which I'll, I, it should be higher. It should be higher than 16%, but you know what? It's fine. It's cool. No worries. I completely understand. Um, you know, you bias aside, yeah, it's still good to see their 16%. Totally biased. It should be higher. should be 20 25%, but because the fact of, Everyone knows how loud PNC is. Everyone knows how loud the Caniacs are and stuff like that. It's a tough, like the Hurricanes this season are 20, they went 27, 10, and four at home. Sold at all 41 games at home. And, you know, we talked about that earlier this week of just how great that milestone is for the record and the sellouts and stuff like that. But you look at the playoffs, man, it's a, it goes up a whole another level of, for the Hurricanes and their fans. And that's where home ice advantage really kicks in because of the fan base. So if you're the hurricanes, if you're the visiting team, if you're the visiting team coming to PNC, especially for playoffs, every guy has said it, that place is loud. That place is tough to be in. Like even if getting Kuznetsov is like, I've been in a lot of those barn in that barn a lot when it's been tough. And it's got to be good. It's kind of nice to be on the good side of that for once. And it, it, the, every player in the league knows, like even Mike, when uh, Michael Bunting came in, it's tough to play in Carolina if you're the visiting team because they are on you and they are allowed all game, especially in the playoffs. So it goes to show that the players around the league recognize PNC is such a tough place to play because the team is tough to play against and the Caniacs make that place really loud. And it's why it's one of the lar- loudest barns in the league. Like, don't let anyone fool you. It is PNC. So don't get it twisted. We all know who what the loudest barn is in the league, and it's right there in Raleigh at PNC Arena. But that will wrap up this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. Thank you to the Everydayer for making this your first listen of the day. And just thank you for everyone for the support for the first week here running the podcast. It's been a lot of fun just interacting with everyone on YouTube, you know, Twitter, anything on social media. Just thank you all so much for just taking the time and just listening to me and becoming an everydayer. And that's what it really counts because I want to make this an interactive podcast. I want to have fun talking to everyone on social media, on YouTube, in the comment section. Like, let me know what you think of like the who are going to be the key players in the Kings first blues game. Who do you want to see the Hurricanes play in the first round? Let me know in the comments below on YouTube. Love to interact with everyone over there. Make sure to subscribe. Turn on the bell notification so you don't miss when a new episode drops. And also hit that like button on the video because it helps me out. You know, it brings great support and share with all your friends because the more subscribers we get, 
the more we are seen and we can do more cool stuff because we're right now on the road to 1,000 subscribers. We're almost up to 790 right now. The goal is 1,000, so make sure to you know subscribe, share, and all that great stuff. Also, too, if you do listen to the audio version, please subscribe and leave a five-star uh, um, rating. And if you leave your review, I might just read it on the podcast. Because like I said, I want to have fun with everyone and make this a really great show and all that good stuff. If you want to follow me for anything up to date in terms of what I'm doing with the hockey writers, this is their beat writer. Uh, you can follow me at one true Zach on Twitter. That's Owen each true Zach. Or if you want to you know, keep up with everything that's going on with the podcast, go to LO underscore hurricanes. And if you also want to check out my other podcast that I do, it's called the search cats. We're just a weekly show that, you know, it's a little bit more longer formatted. If you want that hour and a half type of show as well. So make sure you go check all that good stuff out. I do have a link tree in my bio where you find all my writings and all the podcasts that I do covering your Carolina hurricanes. But that will wrap up this edition of a Friday show of Locked on Hurricanes. I will see you guys on Monday to start another week of covering your team every day, five times a week, right here at Locked on Hurricanes. And as always, let's go Canes.